Welcome back to the airboat build. So today what I'm going to do is some more work on the fuel system. And I have a bunch of um, Dash 6 fittings. And the main goal for today is to modify the 5.3 LS fuel rails and to be able to accommodate using this uh, external fuel pressure regulator. So this is an Aeromotive, it's a boost referenced fuel pressure regulator. And the reason I want to use this is because I'll, I'll be applying boost. I'm not going to be giving this a whole ton of boost. I'm going to start off at 8 pounds and see how it performs with that. But um, maybe I'll turn it up in the future. And overall I just want to follow the principle that fuel pressure should be referenced to boost. So um, I'm going to try to use this. I want to keep using the stock fuel rails just because that's what I have. If I have to buy aftermarket ones, that's fine. But um, today we'll see if we can do it with just using the regular 5.3 truck fuel rails. Now for full disclosure, this is something I've never messed with before. So I'm going to learn this basically as we go. But um, like I've never changed basically the regulator on an LS. This is my, my, the first LS engine I've worked on. But the fundamental principles should all apply. These are the fuel rails. It's, it connects the um, right and left bank with this. This is the supply. This is the return. This is a fuel pressure regulator from the stock Chevy truck. It's referenced off here. This is a vacuum reference. And there's a clip on here, which this clip was on there. I've already taken that off. And then this is just a vacuum reference, which I wondered if if it would be effective with boost, but apparently this regular regulator isn't one-to-one -one referenced. So, you know, with the amount of boost I'm running, which is be about, you know, eight pounds-ish, does it really matter? Probably not. But um, anyway, I'm gonna see if I can make it, make it work. So that's the regulator. There's, I don't know why there's two, but there's this kind of harder plastic it's probably more of a spacer. And then there's an O-ring. That's the seal. And this is just a filter. So, and that's about as far as I've had this apart. So what I'm gonna try to do is basically what I want is, so fuel will come in, fuel will get to both the rails, and then the return. And then I'm gonna have that air motive aftermarket regulator downstream on the return line and by limiting flow and being boost reference that will control what pressure is everything upstream so this regulator basically i want to try to disable it um, so i'm going to take a good look at it and figure out the best way to make it basically just not be there because i don't need it to function anymore So just trying to figure out how this thing works. So I think what happens is fuel can get in through all these little holes and then there's a diaphragm down here that's spring loaded. And yeah, that seems to be spring loaded. And of course that would be affected by the vacuum coming in here that would modulate it. And then the regulator would let a certain amount of fuel get through that then would come out this hole here and then So the fuel that comes out that center hole looks like it goes down there and then that should connect into the return line. So I think for my purpose, if I can eliminate that diaphragm on the inside, so fuel will be able to freely flow through here and come out here, um, that should work because then, as I mentioned, the, the regulator will be downstream of here and that'll control the pressure. So the best way to do that, I'm not sure, but I think I'm gonna to try to disassemble this regulator without completely destroying it. Okay, now I have a new plan. So, looking at this again, like I, like I said, basically, so the fuel will come, go in these holes, 
this is a little, there's a valve in there basically that's spring loaded and that's what regulates it. And then it comes out here and then it goes in here. So there's lots of different ways to do it. You could basically just disable that diaphragm and have that valve wide open. But uh, what my plan is now is to bypass it. And the way I'm gonna do that is this would normally fit in here and there's an O-ring here. So if I remove that O-ring, you know, don't drop it. Hold on a sec. Okay, no bonus points for losing that O-ring down there. Let's see if I can fish it out. Okay, that was annoying. I recommend not dropping the O-ring down there. I had to use this little snap to get it out. Anyway, so that's the O-ring. It lives in there. My plan is that... If I remove that O-ring and I remove this little spigot that fits into there, then basically fuel won't even need to go into this regulator at all. It will be in this housing here and it will basically just flow past here over this lip and down into there and down into the return line. So the only thing to confirm for that is that there's going to be enough gap between the top of this lip and the bottom of here. I don't want to change and mess with this because I need this for a seal, but I don't need this. So I'm going to, if I cut this off here, and have the regular seal here, will enough fuel get between here and here? So just a rough and dirty measurement. So just measuring that, so this then is the distance from the top of that lip to the top of that lip. And that corresponds with from there to there. Okay. So I just ground that little nub off and you can see kind of the valve on the inside there. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that there's enough basically room for the fuel to flow when that's seated down there back in its normal spot. And the way I'm gonna check is well you saw with that caliper it's a bit rough. So I stole a piece of Play-Doh from a kid. And basically, I guess I don't need very much. So the thickness of this Play-Doh will be the space available for fuel to flow. Which should be roughly that, I guess. So that's a better example of it. So basically blue is everywhere that fuel can be. And this is going down, so this is from the, the housing there going this way here, that's down the return. So the co connection between the two, like there, it gets a bit narrow. Now is that enough? I'm not sure. I'm gonna see if I can make that, if I grind this down a bit more, just to increase that space there, that'll probably be worthwhile. All right, so I ground down more. Basically, so it's flush there, and unfortunately packed it full of Play-Doh. And this is, it's not a great cast, but it's, basically it shows. So the blue is where the fuel would flow, and of course it's 360 degrees. So that's, well, it's quite a bit of space there. Realistically, there's a good three to four millimeters all the way around. So that actual area should be quite a lot. It should be quite a bit more than that was coming out of that little hole. So I think that'll be fine. Now what I gotta do is take all this Play-Doh out. Probably I'll, I gotta replace the injectors anyway. So I'll take the rail apart, get all the stupid Play-Doh out, and then uh, move on. Now one thing I've thought about I might do 
you just fill this with epoxy. And the reason why is because there's still a diaphragm in there. And um, the di it won't be functional. There'll be no, no um, use of it at all. And it could be something though that if it ever broke, if that diaphragm tore for whatever reason, then I would get fuel shooting out of there. So anyway, I gotta get the Play-Doh out and then whether I, f I might put some JB Weld in there just to, to seal it up permanent. And then this will live here. I'll put the O-rings back on it and the clip back on it. And essentially, I've disabled this fuel pressure regulator so then I can use my external boost referenced uh, fuel pressure regulator. We'll see if it works. Let me guys, uh, guys, let me know if you think that'll work or not. Um, I'm gonna run it, so we'll find out. All right, so that's the fuel rail. I would highly recommend not putting Play-Doh down it ever. Uh, but I um, I got it out, I blew it out. It took uh, actually a bit of work to get it out. But since I have it out and I took the injectors out anyway, I might as well put the new ones in. So the new injectors I'm using, they're Deck 80s. I'm using Deck 80s because uh, well, basically because they've been used before with with success. So sloppy mechanics use them, so they should be good enough for me. So those are my new deck of 80s. Obviously these deck 80s are taller than the stock injectors. So I'll just build some spacers to um, locate that rail where it needs to be. That should be just fine. So all those are in there now. And of course the other side will be elevated as well. So everything just gets lift it up a relative amount. So this is the vacuum re reference that would have gone on there. Obviously now this is non-functional, so there's no reason to hook it up. I'll probably just put a cap on there or I might fill it with epoxy, as I said before. This though is gonna be my new vacuum reference. So I'll take the vacuum off here and that will go to my boost reference um, fuel pressure regulator. So there we go. The Rails are installed, the new DECA 80 pound injectors are on both sides. And the modified pressure regulator. So that's pretty much done. Um, I do need to build some spacers because as you can see, the rail is now lifted up a bit higher. So that inch or whatever that is. I'll basically just build some aluminum spacers, maybe plastic, and then just run bolts down through there. So that'll be stable. And I'm gonna connect, I got some fittings for here, so let's try those. For the GM fuel lines, there's um, two fittings. I'm using the Russell brand, so 64123. 
that's for a dash six to the three eighths line. And um, the way these fittings work is there's a kind of a hook that goes over the top. Inside there's an O-ring, I don't know if you can see that. And then it converts of course to a dash six. So pretty clever little fitting and then it should work just fine. That fits on there. On these stock GM lines, they're different sizes. So the 3 8 is the feed and a 5 16 is the return. So on the 5 16 it's 644113. Just a slightly smaller fitting. It goes on the same way. There we go. Because these fuel rails are now higher, I cut these four spacers and they'll just fit under there. This is just uh, aluminum tubing. So that'll be good. Now the one problem though, is that the factory bolts and they're a metric bolt they're too short, obviously. They're an inch too short. So I think what I'm going to do, I'll look to see if I have enough, um, any extra metric bolts. Probably I don't, not that length. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, there's a brass fitting in there. I'll just drill it out and retap it for, I have lots of SAE bolts, so probably I'll just put a quarter inch bolt in there. Okay, fuel rails are done. So in the next video, I'll get the actual fuel pressure regulator mounted and I'll start running lines. I got the end fittings there and we'll get it all put up into the boat. Thanks for watching.